Thank you for joining me for another reading through the New Testament. Today, we are in 1 Timothy chapter 6 in the English Standard Version. Let all who are under a yoke as bondservants regarded, regard their own masters as worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and the teaching may not be reviled. Those who have believing masters must not be disrespectful on the ground that they are brothers. Rather, they must serve all the better, since those who benefit by their good service are believers and beloved. Teach and urge these things, if anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up and conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words, which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of, means of gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who is in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from the reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up for treasure, storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. O Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge, for by professing that some have swerved from the faith, and grace be with you. Paul's last letter, first letter to Timothy, is mixed with um, exhortations to Timothy, as he says, to guard the deposit that had been entrusted to him, recognizing his work as an evangelist, which in chapter 4 of the second letter, he will remind him to preach that word. But also is in the chapter is Paul's understanding and exhortations to Timothy to warn those who are rich, to recognize their responsibility, not that being rich is a sin, but then in the presence of being rich in this present age, he says, charge them not to be haughty or arrogant, or set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, and who God who has created the opportunity for them to be rich, that the rich in turn are to create the opportunity for others to be benefactors of the gift that they've received. Because in a real sense, everything God is teaching us to do and to be is community. To be people committed to each other, not deeply individualistic, but deeply communal, people who care about each other. God doesn't want to be disconnected from our society. He wants us to be connected through a community conception of what it really means to belong to people. Admittedly, 
We are to love the world, love not the world, but love the Lord. Yes. But you can have compassion for people and love them without belonging to them, even as God has. So with that exhortation, we conclude this letter to Timothy and recognize that Paul wants Timothy to understand that there are some who have a wrong understanding, some knowledge that, as he says, some have professed and swerved from the faith. Let us be exhorted today to not swerve away from what is true, but walk carefully in it to be an honor to our God. Join me again for another reading tomorrow through the New Testament, making your weekday strong with the Word of God.